So heading down to Tennessee again. I do this trip about two times a year now. Once in the spring, once in the fall. You never know what you're gonna find. This time, as soon as we got there, we found that Tony had left his bag back at the house with all of his meds and his toiletries and chargers and phones and stuff he needed. So he didn't get off on a good foot. But he had his fishing gear and we are here, so that's what we were doing. And it didn't get much better while floating under a tree. It uh, snagged Tony's high dollar rod and reel out from the back of the boat, so we had to launch a rescue operation. <laughs> we had about $1,200 or more worth of fly gear hanging in a tree. And that wasn't easy with the current and the trees and dragging that boat up and over trees. The fishing wasn't good either. The fish we could pick up were small. This was a funny little guy. He was obviously a hatchery rainbow, the only rainbow we caught the whole time. Um, it's like he was injured in the pen or something, but kind of was cute. He looked like a, my favorite angling artist, Andrea Larco's, like drawings that leaked off a piece of paper. And then we accidentally spilled a whole bottle of whiskey with the reserve in the bottom of the cooler. We had no choice but try to recover it through the drain. <laughs> it really didn't taste bad at all. Day two. It was a cold day, but I knew we didn't wrong, did wrong. We didn't offer the river her whiskey before ours. Major faux pas. It was so cold that morning too. But maybe we did something right. We got into some fish. Slightly better fish. Still weren't moving a ton. Look at that, a post fin on that one. May not be big, but they sure are pretty at least. That's a big spring. That thing pumps out a lot of water. Still struggling that same size class. Springs everywhere coming out of the sides of the mountain. It's really pretty. As are the fish, like us. Still not exactly what we came down here for. It's the third day. We're getting pretty beat down. Really needing a good day. But we just slog on through. It's a little bit warmer this day. Feel good about the conditions and immediately. Tony's moving fish every other cast. Still weren't connecting with them. It took a while to figure out what to do. Even then, we couldn't get out of that 14 inch size class. We're not even moving the big fish like we want. I did lose one, a nice fish here the day before after it wrapped me around an oar. So here the day before, we saw this same hatch happening, BWOs and snouts were just rising everywhere. As far as you could see, there were fish rising. Right there, you can't get away from one. It's Tony's turn, we spot a pod of rising fish, and he's on. He barely even saw that size 20 dry disappear. I told him to set the hook. He's fighting that on a 4X tippet and a little 20, size 20 hook. And he lands the best fish of the trip. So right there, a fish both makes and ends the trip, more or less. But it was a lot of fun watching that fish eat and everything, side casting to it, that was neat. That's a memorable catch right there. So, heading back home. 
Gonna wait for the weather to break. Let's keep on fishing.